Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Ito ang unang salita na namutawi sa bibig ng ating Panginoong Hesus habang nakabayubay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Sa huling gusto ng huling sandali ng kanyang buhay, naalala pa rin ng Panginoon na patawarin ang mga taong gumawa sa kanya ng kasamaan, ang mga taong nanakit sa kanya, ang mga taong sumisigaw na ipako siya sa krus, ipako siya sa krus. Sa huling sandali, ang una bagay na naalala ng Panginoon ay pagpapatawad. Uulitin ko yun. Ang unang bagay na naalala ng Panginoong Hesus ay pagpapatawad. Sa mga verse na ito, ang isang word na nag-strike sa akin bukod doon sa seritang forgive ay yung word na father. It reminds me of a child na nagsusumbong sa kanyang ama o nagsasabi sa kanyang ama Tay, huwag mo silang pansinin pinapatawad ko sila patawarin mo rin sila. Ang normal na reaksyon ng isang batang nasaktan ay magsasabi, tatakbo at magsusumbong sa kanyang tatay, Tay, ito yun nang buli sa akin. Tay, ito yun na nakit sa akin. Pero ang sinabi ng Panginoong Hesus sa kanyang ama, Tay, ito yun nang buli sa akin. Tay, ito yun na nakit sa akin. Tay, patawarin mo sila. Patawarin mo sila. He pleaded to God, His Father, for us. Yan ang unang nabanggit ni Lord. Yan ang unang naalala ni Lord nung siya ay nasa krus ng Kalbaryo. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 to 15 For if you forgive men when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their sins your father will not forgive your sins Isang mabigat na salita mula sa ating Panginoon At hindi natin ito pwedeng baliwalay Ang sabi ni Lord Kapag hindi mo pinatawad ang iyong kapwa na gumawa sa iyo ng kasalanan, hindi ka rin papatawarin ng Diyos Ama na nasa langit. Malinaw? Ang sabi pa ni Lord sa Luke chapter 6, If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. So, ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, mahalin natin yung mga taong hindi nagmamahal sa atin, yung mga taong gumagawa sa atin ng kasamaan, yung mga taong nagtataksil sa atin, yung mga taong naging masama sa atin, masama sa ibang tao. Sabi pa ni Lord no, sa Luke chapter 6, sabi niya, Be merciful. Just as your Father is merciful. Just as your Father. Again, again na naman yung word na Father, no? Yung word na Father, it denotes of uh, likeness. Kasi sabi nga, di ba, may kasabihan, like Father, like Son. Son must be like His Father. So, ang sabi ni Lord, tulad ng iyong ama na maawain, maging maawain ka rin sa iba. Sabi pa niyan, sabi pa ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. 
Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Mga kapatid, you cannot give what you do not have. Kung pinatawad ka ni Lord sa iyong mga kasalanan, magagawa mo rin patawarin ang iba dahil naranasan mong patawarin ng Diyos. Forgiveness is the only option. Walang ibang option kundi magpatawad. Ito ang kalooban ng Diyos. Ito ang dapat nating gawin. Dapat tayong magpatawad at dapat natin piliin na palaging magpatawad. So, the reflection question is this. You can answer this. You can ask this sa inyong mga sarili. In times of hurts and offense, how can you draw closer to God, your Father? I repeat, times of hurts and offense, how can you draw closer to God, your Father? Remember, it is Him. It is your Father in heaven. How can you draw closer to Him? Kapag ikaw ay nasasaktan, kapag ikaw ay nakakaranas ng iba't ibang uri ng sakit, paano ka lalapit sa Diyos upang mas maging intimate pa sa Kanya. Pangalawang reflection question, how will you love someone who is showing no remorse o pagsisisi sa kanyang mga nagawang kasalanan? Not even a single remorse. Hindi mo siya nakitang nagsisi hindi mo siya nakitang o narinig na magpatawad o gumawa ng mabuti sa'yo. Ngayon, to reflect, paano mo mamahalin ang tao na hindi humihingi ng tawad o nagpapakita ng pagsisisi na kanyang pagkakamali o nagawang kasalanan sa iyo? This is hard. Pero we can do it sa tulong ng ating Panginoon. Second word. Truly I tell you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Makikita sa Luke 23, verse 43 to be exact. Pero tatalakayin din natin yung verses 39 to 43, syempre. Pero bago yun, yung mga nangyari sa previous verses, ang pinaka nangyari lang doon, yung mga ibang tao sa paligid nila, tsaka yung mga soldiers, ay ininsulto nila sa Jesus Christ. So, ayun. So, dumako na tayo sa verse 39. Sabi dito, One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. So, hinto muna tayo dyan kasi gusto ko makita natin kung paano ba yung senaryo nila at kung paano din nag-react itong criminal sa left side ni Jesus Christ. Kasi, uh, for our information, may dalawang criminal na nakasama si Jesus Christ na napako sa krus sa panahong yan. One was on his left, the other was on his right. <clears throat> so this one, yung nagsalita sa 39, uh, verse 39, is the one on his left. So yung given, ayun, ninaim na diba, criminals daw sila. So, may ginawa sila, yan, for them to deserve yung crucifixion, yung pagpako sa kanila sa cross. And um, mamaya, mas makikita pa natin kung um, ano ba yung nagawa nila, ganyan, kung bakit nila deserve to in a way, ganyan. Tapos, we can also see, ayan, we can 
um, kung ano yung dalawang pre- pwedeng reaction ng mga tao, especially if they w- would be experiencing yung mga um, kahirapan, ganyan, sufferings, tulad na lang ng example dyan sa may um, verse na yan mismo, napako sila sa kus. So, that um, scenario ay isang example na mismo ng suffering. ba diba? Kasi, kung isipin mo, hinihintay na lang talaga nilang mamatay sila kasi napako na sila sa kus. Eh. Wala na silang takas doon. Hintay na lang talaga nila na mamatay sila, ganyan. Pero sa pagkakataong to, hindi ko malaman kung bakit, ganyan, sa sarili kong isip, na kung bakit kaya ito yung um, sinabi at ginawa nitong criminal sa left side ni Jesus. Parang, he used his strength yan, to say this to Jesus. So, I don't know what's happening sa kanya eternally, internally, ganyan, pero he chose to say this. Na kung itatagalog natin, eh parang ganito. Diba, Diyos ka? Sabi mo ganito. Bakit hindi ito yung nangyayari? So, kung isipin natin, if we would reflect sa buhay natin, ako, to be honest, there are instances sa buhay ko na kapag naka-experience ako ng trials, sufferings, I would be whining to God, I would be asking Him, parang tatanong ko, Lord, diba sabi mo, Diyos ka? Diba sabi mo ganito? Sabi mo, nasamahan mo ko, baro bakit ganyan? Pero ang dami kong question, ang dami natin minsan na tanong sa Diyos na parang in a way na iinsulto natin siya. Ganon, sa mga actuations natin at sa kung paano tayo mag-react. So, um, as we go, sa pagpapatuloy sa mga verses, I hope na reflect din natin yung sarili natin. Ayun, kung saan, um, ganun din yung naging reaction natin, baka katulad nitong mga criminals sa to. So, yan. Makikita natin sa kanya na, I can say, na medyo walang pag, um, pag-repent sa kanya. Kasi makita mo, di ba, ininsulto niya pa si Jesus Christ, eh alam naman niya na Messiah. Siya na mismo nagsabi, di ba, aren't you the Messiah? Di ba, Diyos ka? Sa Tagalog. Pero, ganyan pa rin sinabi niya. Ininsulto niya pa rin si Jesus Christ. Ganun. Hindi natin nakita yung pagbabalik loob niya, ayan sa Diyos. So, pumunta na tayo sa verse 40. Sabi dito, But the other criminal rebuked him. So, itong criminal na to, ito yung nasa right side ni Jesus Christ. So, ang kausap niya ngayon, yung criminal na nasa left side ni Jesus, yung nang insulto kay Jesus Christ. So, patuloy natin, sabi niya dito, Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence, We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Cut. So, makikita natin dyan, no? Yung umpisa pa lang, kasi yung isa, yun nga, inisult niya si Jesus, medyo mayabang pa siya, ganyan. So, etong criminal na to, although criminal siya, yes, he has done something wrong, ganyan. Pero makikita natin, umpisa pa lang, yung fear niya sa Lord. Kasi, I can say, I can assume, ayan, na na nandito na siya sa realization niya. Nagkaroon siya ng realization. Given yung situation na um, hinintay niya na lang mamatay siya, nakapako na siya sa krus. There is no escape. Natakot na siya. Natakot siya sa Diyos. Sa, kasi yun yung una niyang tinanong. Isa, minsan kasi kapag may mga realization tayo, we also help people to realize the same realization So, magitan ng pagsasalita natin, pagbayo natin. So, in this case, sabi niya doon sa may criminal na nasa left side ni Jesus Christ, don't you fear God? May kadoktong pani niya pinutol doon. Sabi niya, since you are under the same sentence, may parusa. Ganun sa kasalanan nila. And we can see na yung naging reaction itong lalaking to, may pag-amin. Sabi niya doon sa verse 41, we are punished justly. Para sa Tagalog, nararapat lang sa atin to kasi may kasalanan tayo. Tama lang to na maranasan natin. Sabi niya dun, di ba? For we are getting what our deeds deserve. Given, may kasalanan sila, nag-trial, syempre tr- nag-trial din sila, tinignan kung talaga nga pang ginawa nila. So, napatunayan kasi sila nandyan. Pero ibang usapan pa yung kay Jesus Christ. Ayan, so balik tayo sa mga criminals. Makikita mo dun yung pagsisisi niya, pag-amin niya, pagtanggap niya na ay talagang sinful ako, I deserve this. Hindi tulad nung nasa left side, wala siyang ganyang realization. 
hardened yung heart niya, kaya ininsulto niya si Jesus Christ. Tapos may kadoktong pa yung sinabi nitong lalaking nasa right side ni Jesus Christ. But this man has done nothing wrong. Nakita niya, na contrast niya yung sarili niya, na ikumpara niya yung sarili niya kay Jesus Christ. Na um, siya makasalanan, he deserved what he is experiencing. Well, Jesus Christ did not sin. And he know that. So sabi niya, diba, this man has done nothing wrong. Parang kung itutuloy to, um, yun nga, hindi nagkasala si Jesus Christ, pero nararanasan niya yung nararanasan natin. So parang ganun. Makikita natin yung repentant heart niya as pag-acknowledge na si Jesus wala siyang kasalanan, but he's still there. Naniwala siya, ganun, na um, parang Messiah din si Jesus Christ. So makikita natin yun sa verse 42. Sabi dyan, no? Then he said, dito natin makikita yung talagang paniniwala niya kay Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uulitin ko. Sabi niya, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Cut. Cut muna natin. So, yun nga. Makikita mo na niniwala na siya kay Jesus Christ. Hindi man niya sinabi na, di ba... Ikaw yung misaya, ikaw yung tagapagligtas, ikaw yung pinadala ng Diyos. Hindi nga man sinabi yun. Pero yung katotohanan na sinabi niya kay Jesus Christ, na alalahanin siya kapag bumalik siya sa kingdom, kapag nagpunta siya sa kingdom niya, is a fact na naniniwala siya na si Jesus Christ is misaya. Kasi sasabihin mo ba yun sa taong di mong pinapaniwala ang pupunta doon? Siyempre hindi. So, sa case na itong criminal sa left side, I mean sa right side ni Jesus Christ, um, hindi man siya yung talagang bulgarang nagsabi na, Lord, patawarin mo ako, ganyan, ganyan, tanggapin mo ako, ganyan, tiyatanggap kita. Kahit hindi yun yung ginawa niya, um, makikita natin mamaya sa sagot ni Jesus kung paano yung pagmamahal, ganyan, ng isang um, talagang nagmamahal sa atin. So, ayun, minsan sa buhay natin, may mga ganyan din tayong pagkakataon. Where we realize na minsan yung nangyayari sa atin, somehow we deserved it. We deserve it in a way na kasi minsan dahil sa kagagawa natin, kaya tayo nagkakaganon. Dahil sa mga um, kalukuhan natin, kaya tayo nahirapan minsan, kaya tayo nakaranas ng mga um, sufferings, ganyan. Pero... Ayun, may grace din si Lord na binibigyan niya tayo somehow ng puso na makarealize ng mga bagay-bagay sa paligid natin. Ganun. Tandaan din natin na there is no condemnation in God. So, pumunta na tayo sa verse 43 kung saan yung second word mismo ni Jesus. Ito yung sabi niya. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Ulitin natin. Sabi niya, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So again, no, makikita natin na sabi lang naman ng criminal sa right side ni Jesus Christ, remember me. Diba? When you um, come in, into your kingdom, kapag pumunta daw siya dun sa kingdom niya. Kasi ito yung sagot ni Jesus. Today, you will be with me in paradise. So, makikita mo na may hope agad, may promise agad. Na kahit, um, kung makikita natin sa picture, hirap na hirap si Jesus kasi kung para mo naman yung itsura niya dun sa mga criminals. Yet, the Lord did not condemn yung nasa left side. Hindi, na, hindi niya ginawa yun, hindi niya sinabi na, ay, ikaw sasama, hindi niya sinabi sa criminal sa right side na, um, today you will be with me in paradise. While you, on the other hand, hindi niya sinabi yun dun sa criminal sa left side. Hindi niya sabi na you, on the other hand, would be condemned. Ganyan, ganyan. Hindi niya sinabi yun. Diba? Ang inaddress niya lang, yung um, criminal sa right side niya. Kasi, I believe he saw the heart of this man. That even though he was sinful, even though he deserved what he was having, the Lord's mercy still prevails. Alam niya lahat ng nangyayari. Alam niya kung um, bakit nandyan yung lalaki niyan. Alam niya kung bakit sila nandyan. Alam niya lahat. Pero sa kahit na may mga kasalanan yung mga taong yun, 
ganyan pa rin yung response niya. Gusto niya pa rin at ipinang pinapangako niya pa rin in a way kasi sabi niya today you will be with me in paradise. You will be. 'Di ba? Hindi pa man mangyayari kasi pag namatay pa lang sila doon nila doon sila mapupunta sa ano, paradise doon sa kingdom ng Lord which is yung heaven nga. 'Di ba where there is no mourning, there is no pain. Ganyan. <clears throat> Nagbigay na ng hope si Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I hope na minsan may mga ganun tayong experiences, mga trials, sufferings, sometimes, it's unbearable. If I may say, it's unbearable, it's overwhelming, it's too much. Na minsan, di na natin malama kung paano ba ma- maaalis yung ganun sitwasyon. Pero, ito yung promise ng Lord. Na, tulad nitong criminal on the right side, ni Jesus, if we believe on Jesus Christ, if we acknowledge yung um, need natin for Him, need natin for a Savior, He will be there. He will always answer according to His will. Ganyan, so, let's have hope on this truth that even though we were sinful and we are still Pa minsan minsan nagkakasala pa rin tayo, hindi tayo hindi natin kaya pagdagumpayin yung mga bagay, but there is Jesus who we can always go to, who we can always reach. Ayan, and then he will uplift us. Na uplift niya yung ano, yung criminal sa right side niya nung sinabi nga tuwi. 'Di ba sinagot niya yung lalaking yun na yung sabi niya, "Remember me when you go into your kingdom." Pero 'di ba hindi pa man siya nakakapunta sa kingdom niya. Ito na yung sinabi niya, today, today mismo, hindi bukas, hindi sa susunod na panahon. That man, on his right, will be with him in paradise. Ganun din sa atin, there will be a time, the Lord will come back. Ganyan, there will be a time, na maayos lahat ng bagay, and we can hope, na, na si Lord, hinanda niya lahat, hinahanda niya lahat, and He's just waiting for us to acknowledge yung need natin for Him. Ganyan. So, ayan, yun yung second word ni Jesus Christ. And I have um, reflection questions na nasa susunod na slide. For reflection questions, first is, was there a time in your life where you experienced a tragedy? How did you go about it? Second, is, in reference to the question above, where was God in all that happened? How did this knowledge about where God was during that time affected your perspective? Jesus on the cross. John chapter 19 verse 26 to 27. He said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. Ito ang mga salitang binigkas ni Jesus nung makita niya ang kanyang inang si Maria at ang minamahal niyang alagad sa tabi nito. Pagkatapos itong sabihin ni Jesus, Mula noon, pinatira ng alagad na ito sa kanyang bahay ang ina ni Jesus. Who is John? He is Jesus' cousin. Si John ay pinsan ni Jesus sa mother side. Siya at ang kapatid niyang si James ay anak ng kapatid na babae ni Mary. Jesus' closest friend. Si John ay malapit kay Jesus hindi lang dahil sila ay magpinsan, kundi isa sa rin si John sa inner circle ni Jesus kasama ni Peter at ni James. Siya ay tinawag din the disciple whom Jesus loved, providing us with the insight that of all the twelve, John was nearest to Jesus. He was also the less surviving apostle of Jesus. Kung babasahin natin ng John chapter 21 verse 21 to 22, tinanong ni Pedro si Jesus, Panginoon, paano naman ang taong ito? Sumagot si Jesus, Kung nais kong mabuhay siya hanggang sa pagbabalik ko, ano sa iyo? 
Si John lamang sa mga apostol ang namatay in a natural death. Pero bago yun, nasulat muna niya ang ilang libro sa Bible kabilang na ang Book of Revelation. Noong panahon nila, very common na tuwing mayroong pinapako sa krus, nagpupunta ang mga kamag-anak, kaibigan at kahit mga kaaway para saksihan ang ginagawang pagpako. Noong panahon na ipinako si Jesus, may apat na babae na nakatayo sa tabi ng krus ni Jesus. Ang kanyang ina at ang kapatid nitong babae, si Maria na asawa ni Cleopas at si Maria Magdalena. Kung mapapansin natin sa table, hindi nabanggit sa Matthew at Mark si Mary na kasama ng mga babae na nagpunta noong ipinako si Jesus. Tanging si John lamang ang nagbangkit tungkol sa pagpunta ni Mary. Isa pa sa mapapansin natin na hindi pinangalanan ni John ang kanyang sariling ina, maging ang kanyang sarili. He evidently wanted to play down his mother's identity as well as his own. John prepared for Jesus' action in verses 26 and 27. Jesus addressed his mother by saying, Woman. The word woman in the passage was not a term that carried disrespect. It actually was a word that carried a sense of respect, honor, and endearment. Sabi ni Matthew Henry sa kanyang commentary, He calls her woman, not mother, not out of any disrespect to her, but because mother would have been a cutting word to her who was already wounded with grief. Jesus is revealed to be a very thoughtful and caring son, who, even while in deadly pain, was able to think of his own mom's welfare. Sabi sa Exodus, Chapter 20, verse 12 Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. Jesus honored the fifth commandment by making provision for his mother. Sinasabi noong panahon na ipinako si Jesus sa cross, maaring patay na ang asawa ni Mary na si Joseph. Samantala, ang kanyang mga kapatid naman ay hindi pa naniniwala sa kanya. Hanggang noon siya ay nabuhay muli. Sabi sa John chapter 7 verse 5, For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Kaya naman, bilang pinakamatandang anak ni Mary, siya ang may responsibilidad sa kanyang ina. He selected John, his closest friend who is consistently referred to as the disciple Jesus loved. Dahil sa pagmamahal ni Jesus sa kanyang ina, ito ay ipinagkatiwala niya kay John. Hindi mayaman na tao si John, pero siya ang pinili. Jesus was clearly more concerned with his mother's spiritual welfare than her physical life and financial security. And also, John lived longer than any of the rest. Seems to have been the best choice and indeed the perfect choice to look after Mary. What can we learn from this? Jesus cared for family. Makikita natin kung paano pahalagahan ni Jesus ang kanyang pamilya kahit noong siya ay pinako sa krus. Bilang mga kristyano, ito ay pagpapakita sa atin ni Jesus kung paano din natin dapat pahalagahan ang ating mga pamilya. Tandaan, ang unang ministry natin ay ang ating pamilya. He gives us various assignments according to our relationship with Him. The more we grow in faith, the more we become intimate with God and grow more trustworthy in His sight, the more we will receive assignments from Him.
Fourth last words of Jesus, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Matthew 27, 46, and also Mark 15, 34, we can read the whole text. It says there, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the only words of Jesus na na-witness at naisulat ng dalawang gospel writer, while the rest from the seven were quoted only once in a particular gospel book. Also, dalawang beses lamang po sinabi sa lahat ng pitong mga huling salita ni Jesus na He cried out in a loud voice. Dito sa text na ito at sa ikapitong huling mga salita niya. Ito din yung opening text ng Psalm 22. The psalmist here, which happens to be David, in verse 1 said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? It is interesting to know na sa mga panahong ito ay hindi pa ganoon kalaganap ang idea ng crucifixion. Yet, on the succeeding verses of this psalm, David prophesied the Messiah's crucifixion when he wrote this on verse, verses 16 to 18. They have pierced my hands and my feet. They have numbered all my bones. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. We can definitely say that he is suffering so much at this point for him to make such a cry, a piercing cry, a cry not against God, but a desperate cry to God. Pero we may ask, iniwan ba talaga siya ng Ama? Was Jesus really forsaken? Abandoned? The surrounding verses of this passage, as well as Jesus' statements bago siya ipagkanulo ni Judas, tell us a lot about him being seemingly forsaken, not only by God, but by many others. Una, by his close friends or those whom he, we can consider his loved ones. Sabi sa Mark 15.40, Some women were watching from a distance. Ito ay sina Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James and Joseph, at si Salome. Mga nakasama niya ng madalas at nakasaksi ng marami sa kanyang mga ginawang himala. But these people were nowhere near Jesus. They are just watching from a distance. Sa ibang translation, they are looking on from afar. Wouldn't you request for your friends and loved ones to be by your side sa mga ganito katinding paghihirap? Unfortunately, that was not the case for Jesus. Pangalawa, by his disciples. Malinaw sa tagpo kung saan dinakip si Jesus na nagpulasan ang lahat ng kanyang mga disipulo at later on, ang isa sa mga ito ay tinatuwa pa siya ng tatlong beses. Sabi sa Matthew 26:56, All disciples deserted him and fled. A clear statement of abandonment by those whom he treated so dearly. And lastly, God himself. So to answer, did God really turn his eyes away from Jesus? Sabi sa Isaiah 59, hindi maikli ang kamay ng Diyos upang hindi tayo mailigtas. Hindi siya bingi upang hindi tayo madinig. But our iniquities have separated us from him and our sins hid his face from us. At that moment, God placed the sin of the world on Jesus. And because of that, God had to turn away from him. As Jesus was feeling that weight of sin, he was experiencing a separation from God for the only time in all eternity. Ito yung fulfillment of the prophetic statement in Psalm 22 at ito din yung cup na pinagpray ni Jesus na tanggalin sa kanya kung maaari noong naroon siya sa Garden of Gethsemane. Sobrang hirap na ng physical sufferings niya sa cruise pero ang mas mahirap doon ay yung pansamantalang iwaksi at iwan siya ng Ama. And the only relieving thing about it, it is part of God's plan. Prophet Isaiah clearly said na ang lahat ng ito ay kalooban ng Diyos. 
Isaiah 53, it was God's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. But why? Why would God allow this? We will now reflect on the significance of Jesus' abandonment on the cross. Why was Jesus forsaken? Uh, we will explore three significance of it. Una, to prove the authority of God's word. To make eternal life available to all. And to identify and empathize with mankind. Authority of God's word. Minsan nababasa natin sa Bible yung mga katagang it is written, this happened so that, thus says the Lord, which indicate that something happened as stated by God himself or through the Bible. In the case of Jesus' fourth last words, God through the prophet Isaiah said, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him, to Jesus, the iniquity of us all. God already knew what is bound to happen to Jesus. We will all turn away from him and he will be the one to allow it and lay down our sins to him. This proves the authority and sovereignty of God and his word. Nothing that happened to Jesus during his earthly days was out of God's sight. Jesus needs to be left out to, to fulfill what was written in the scripture. Even in Mark 15:28, it says there, And the scripture was fulfilled which said, He was numbered with the transgressors. Also, in Luke 24:46, it was written, The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. God allowed and orchestrated this to happen, Jesus' abandonment included. He has rule and sovereignty over everything, including the suffering and death of Jesus, as well as any other Christian. Next, to make eternal life available to all. Sabi sa 1 Timothy 2, 5-6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. When Jesus cried out to the Father, it was a dreadful moment in the history of man. Narealize ni Lord yung horror of what is about to happen and what he now needs to endure. He is about to be engulfed in the raging sea of sin. Evil triumph, but only for a moment, sabi sa Luke 22.53. Yung burden ng lahat ng kasalanan ng mundo overwhelmed the humanity of Jesus for a moment. This needs to happen because God's laws and requirements for eternal life demand that only through death, in our case of a human, shall forgiveness be made available to mankind. Yung abandonment na experience ni Jesus is a complete human experience. This is exactly what happens to all of us when we die. We too are all alone at the time of death. His suffering and anguish as a man, therefore, qualifies him to be our only legitimate mediator to God. At dahil dito, he freed us from the sting of death and sin. Kaya the assurance of salvation is available to all who will believe. Lastly, to identify and empathize with mankind. Have you ever felt or naalala nyo pa ba yung mga times na may pinagdadaanan kayo and then narinig nyo yung mga katagang ito from a friend or kakilala na intindihan kita alam ko ngayon pinagdadaanan How was it? Were you relieved? Though we know naman na madalas yung mga act na yon yung mga sinasabi nila were sincere Pero sometimes it does not help to hear those things from people saying na naintindihan na tayo. Well, in fact, hindi naman nila alam yung ating nakakanasan. 
one major effect of Jesus' abandonment is the assurance that someone can really identify to any pain we are going through. In Isaiah 53 verse 3, Jesus was described as someone who was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and held him in low esteem. Hence, another significance of abandonment to Jesus is for eternal companionship. Jesus was the man of sorrows, sabi nga sa Isaiah 53. He was rejected, not esteemed, alone. Are we not familiar with this too? Hindi ba ito yung mga bagay na marami sa atin ayaw din maranasan? Yet, this is where He comes to redeem us. He can identify. He can empathize. He comforts. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Nothing can separate us from His love, which is in Christ Jesus. He will be with us up to the end of the world, as promised on March 20. The promises of the finished work of Christ on the cross preserves our life, even during the hardest and darkest moments. So to reflect, Let's answer this question and uh, meditate on it. Have you ever felt forsaken by your friends, loved ones? God, how did you respond to that feeling? Also, how can Jesus' sufferings on the cross help or comfort you whenever you feel abandoned and or alone? As we take time to... Uh, meditate on this I pray that the four last words of Jesus will make sense to us especially to the areas of our life our lives where we need him the most Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ngayon naman po ay dadako na tayo sa ikalimang huling salita na Yesus noong siya ay natako sa krus. Ngunit bago iyon, ma-share mo na ako sa inyong kwento na nangyari sa New Testament. May tagpo sa New Testament na saan yung nanay ng mga anak ni Zebedee ay humingi ng pabor kay Yesus. Lumod sila at sinabi ng nanay na kung pupwede, na paupuin ang kanyang mga anak yung isa sa kanan, yung isa sa kaliwa ng trono ni Jesus pag siya ay nasa kaharian na nito. Then, sinabi ni Jesus, You don't know what you are asking. Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can. They answered. Sinasabi dito ni Jesus yung cup of suffering na tinatawag na somehow, maaari nating makonek sa fifth word ni Jesus Christ. So, let's read. This is the fifth word of Jesus Christ on the cross. John chapter 19 verse 28. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Sa inabaha ba ng journey ni Jesus Christ, napagod siya ng gusto. Tugot pawis ang nawala sa kanya at sa puntong ito, naubos siya na siya ng tubig sa katawan. Pinapakita dito ang pagiging tao ni Jesus. Yes, He is God, but also, meron din siyang human nature. Pinantok siya, napagod, nakaramdam, may emosyon, nagutom at nauhaw. Ito ang punto ng buhay ni Jesus sa lupa na hinubad niya, ang, hinubad niya totally ang pagiging Diyos niya. Hindi niya napigilan o hindi niya pinigilan at tiniis ang kanyang kauhawan. Jesus said, I am thirsty. It shows Jesus' physical humanity. Dito na napagod ng husto si Jesus Christ. Kung napapansin natin, hindi nagpakadyo si Jesus Christ dito. Hindi niya inutusan yung mga kawal o sinabi ng direkta 
sa kanila na pahingi ng tubig. Sinabi niya na nauuhaw siya at kapag ang isang tao ay nauuhaw, sign iyon na napapagod na siya at natutuyuan na. Malinaw na pinapakita dito ang pagiging tao ni Jesus dahil nararamdaman niya ng natural ang mga nararamdaman ng mga ordinaryong tao. At para mapawi ang kanyang uhaw o kauhawan, pinainom siya ng kawal. So, ang nangyari, Mayroong jar of wine vinegar doon. Ang wine vinegar ay inu- iniinom ng mga kawal at ayon sa pag-aaral, konting-konti lang yung iniinom nilang wine vinegar para lang mapawi yung uhaw nila habang sila ay nagbabantay sa mga nakapako sa kuro. So, hindi talaga siya nakapagpa-hydrate. Sadyang pampawi lang talaga ng uhaw. So, ang ginagawa ng, ang ginawa ng mga kawal, so, so nila yung sponge doon sa wine vinegar nilagay yung sponge sa tangkay ng hiso plant and lifted it to Jesus lips. Yung tangkay naman ng hiso plant, mayroon din niyang malaking significance sa mga Jews. Kasi ito yung nagpapaalala sa kanila noong first Passover night na mababasa natin sa Exodus chapter 12 verse 22. Sabi ni Moses sa verse na yan, take a bunch of hiso dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and sides of the door frames. So, basically, yung hiso plant, ginagam- ginamit nila yan noon para magwisik o maglagay ng dugo sa top and sides ng door frame. Nang sa gayon sila ay makaligtas sa kamatayan. Kung kapapansin natin, lahat na nangyayari kay Jesus ay at maging yung mga bagay na ginamit sa kanyang pagkapako ay kasangkapan upang matupad ang propesya. And the Old Testament prophesy what happened to Jesus on the cross. So, ibig sabihin, yung nangyari kay Jesus Christ that time ay fulfillment of the scripture. Masabi natin na ito ay fulfillment of scripture kasi naka-record yan sa Old Testament at mababasa natin iyan sa Psalm chapter 69 verse 21. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. Yan yung katunayan o yung ebidensya na yun ang yari kay Jesus Christ ay fulfillment ng scripture. And also, it shows Jesus' determination to complete His task. Isa sa dahilan kung bakit niya tinanggap yung wine vinegar ay para magkaroon pa siya ng lakas para masabi niya pa yung susunod na last words bago siya malagutan ng hininga. So, kinakailangan niya ng moisture, ma-moisturize yung kanyang lalamunan para, hin- para masabi niya nga yung mga kailangan niya pang sabihin. If we are going to put deep meaning on this, God desires us to desire God. God is thirsty. Pero saan ba siya nauhaw? God is thirsty for us, to our worship, commitment, lost soul, and most of all, sa iyo mismo. So, let's reflect on this. Kailan ba tayo huling nag-pers- nagkaroon ng personal worship sa Lord, personal prayer, yung nakausap natin si Lord na naglaan talaga tayo ng time and nakapag heart to heart talk tayo sa kanya and kailan yung huling nakapag uh, akay tayo ng kaluluwa para sa kanya, ba diba? Yun yung great uh, great commission natin sa Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20 sabi dyan, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age so God desires our heart God desires your heart God wants you your whole being kaya nga let's apply this sa buhay natin Itong verse na to, makakatulong to sa atin para mas lalong mapalalim yung 
relasyon natin sa Panginoon. Sabi sa Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Kung babalikan natin yung Old Testament, mapapansin natin na para ma-please ang Panginoon at para mapatawad yung mga kasalanan ng mga tao before, nag sila ng mga patay na hayop. Depende sa kung ano yung kasalanan nila. Pero, ngayon, uh, ine-encourage tayo ni Paul na ialay natin yung katawan natin, yan, yung buhay natin as living sacrifice. Sabi yan, holy and pleasing to God. At yun yung spiritual act of worship natin sa Panginoon. So, so habang uh, bata pa tayo, habang nabubuhay tayo, let's uh, offer our lives sa Panginoon at kahit kailan, hindi tayo magsisisi na si Lord yung pinili natin bilang Diyos at tagapagdiktas. Siyempre, dumadating din sa punto ng buhay natin na nauuhaw din tayo, lalong-lalo na sa pamamahal. Ang kwentong ito, yung si Jesus and the Samaritan Woman, na mababasa natin sa John chapter 4, ang makakapagbigay sa atin ng kaalaman na si Jesus Christ ang the living water. So, dahil sa hinabahaban ng nilakbay ni Jesus Christ at nung kanyang mga disipulo, nagpahinga muna si Jesus sa well of Jacob kasi uh, bumili ng pagkain yung kanyang mga disciple. At habang hinihintay niya, bumalik ang mga ito. So, makto naman na may Samaritana na mag-iigib sana ng tubig. And to cut the story, nagpentuhan sila hanggang sa nalaman ng babae na si Jesus yung ay isang propeta at mesaya. At may pagkakataon na sinabi ni Jesus sa, sa Samaritana sa John chapter 4 verse 13. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Then, uh, ang naging reaksyon ng Samaritan woman, sabi niya, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So, uh, maging tulad sana tayo at pamarisa natin ang Samaritana. Yung kanya naging uh, reaksyon kay Jesus Christ. Dinisar niya kasi yung living water. So, Ngayong alam na natin ito, let's deserve Jesus Christ and He is the living water and only Him who can satisfy our thirst. Ngayong alam na natin yung fifth word ni Jesus Christ, ating pagmilay-nilayan at pagbulay-bulayan ang mga katanungang naririto. Those are the reflection questions na inanda namin para sa inyo. Una, handa ka na bang pawiin ang kauhawan ng Diyos upang mapawi din ang iyong kauhawan sa Kanya? At paano mapawi ang kauhawan ng Diyos sa iyo? Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig at pagpalain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin sa book of John, chapter 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. 
with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit so napakaikling statement lang po na binitawan ni Jesus that time it is finished but it was so powerful until today The Greek term po na ginamit sa, word, sa statement ni Jesus na it is finished ay tetelestai, which means paid in full, or in other words, completed, accomplished, fulfilled, it is done. Sa Galog parang uh, binayaran na tayo ng buo, tetelestai, it is finished. And as I said earlier, What's the purpose behind that? Bakit niya sinabing it is finished? Kasi alam ko na hindi lang siya basta binitawan ni Jesus. May rason bakit niya sinabi yun. And as we have our deep understanding sa sinabi ni Jesus John, the purpose behind that is first, it is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Mula pa Genesis to Malakay, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Yan. Sabi po sa Matthew 5.17, sabay-sabay po nating basahin, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. So, si Jesus po ang nagsabi niyan. Hindi lang po kasi New Testament si Jesus. Hindi lang siya pang New Testament. Kinreate pa lang ni Lord ang mundo. He was already there, sabi sa John uh, chapter 1. At there are also symbols na preparing to Jesus. Like yung mga furnishing sa loob ng tabernacle na nakasulat sa Exodus. Even yung mga pweso ng gamit. Makikita mo yung pattern, pa-cross siya. Hindi lang siya symbols, pati yung ministry ni Jesus. Sinabi rin doon sa Old Testament. Isang tagpo po sa Bible, sa Book of Numbers. Yung time na nagpadala ang Diyos ng ahas sa mga Israelita na nasa ilang sila. Dahil sa katigas ng ulo, ng ulo ng mga Israelita, uh, rebelde na sila sa Diyos. Nang dahil doon, maraming tinuklaw ng ahas at may mga namatay din. Pero may isang tagpo doon nagpawaw sa akin doon. Yung inutusan ni Lord si Moses na gumawa ng isang bronze snake at inilagay niya yun sa tungkod niya sa taas. At sabi ni Lord, kung sino man ang titingin sa tungkod na yun will be healed and live. Which is nabanggit yun ni Jesus sa John 3.14, sabi ni Jesus doon, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the man must be lifted up. Diba? So, sobrang dami. Hindi ko na maisa-isa yung mga prophecy about Jesus doon. Binanggit rin sa Isaiah na he will be rejected by men. No? Na there will be no beauty to attract as to him. Sa Isaiah 61, doon nakalagay yung magiging ministry ni Jesus. Yung He will bind, uh, He will heal broken hearts, etc. Kasi sinabi rin yung po sa Colossians na lahat ng nangyari before was the shadow of the things to come and it was already fulfilled. Jesus is the fulfillment of all of it. Second, it was his father's will. God's will siya. Dahil sa kasalanan ng tao, paparusahan tayo ng Diyos. Pero dahil sa mahal niya ang buong mundo, binigay niya ang anak niya na si Jesus para tapusin at pagbayaran na ang parusa na nakalaan sa atin. When he was uttering those words, it is finished. He was declaring that the death of sin of every mankind in this world was already wiped out completely and forever. So, He became the atonement for us. Sabi po sa Romans 3.25, 
God repres- ah, God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement. Through faith in his blood, he did this to demonstrate justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Justice. Kasi ba diba, nung panahon po nila Moses, kung gusto silang mapatawad ng Diyos, kailangan nila mag-alay ng hayop na walang kapintasan. ba diba po? Pero dito, dahil sa mahal tayo ng Diyos, binigyan niya na yung anak niya to become the atonement for us. Sabi po sa 1 John 14, This is love, not that, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Yan. Then sabi rin po sa 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not all ours, but for, but also for the sins of the world. So, hindi na natin kailangan gumawa ng extra effort, extra work for us to save because He already finished it on the cross and it's only by His grace. Diba? The time po na sinigaw ni Jesus, it is finished. Sabihin, the power of sin was finished and we can now draw near freely to God through Jesus. And it was the power of reconciliation. So, it's time to do our part. Dahil hindi lang dapat na nalaman lang natin basta. Yun na yun. No, it's not. Because Jesus wants us to realize there are things that kailangan natin ma-realize sa sarili natin at kung anong dapat nating response sa sinabi ng yun. Question, tuwing kailan tayo nire-remind the Lord na anak tinapos ko na? And I want to share these things with you. Three points na nag-impact sa akin habang binabasa ko, pinaulit-ulit kong basahin yung statement ni Jesus. So, first, the finished work of Christ tells us to be free from our sins. Sinasabi po sa atin ni Lord na maging malaya tayo sa mga kasalanan natin. Isang karakter ni Lord mapagmahal, very loving si Lord, pero hindi mawawala sa kanyang karakter na galit siya sa kasalanan na umaalipin sa atin. Kaya nga tinapos niya na sa cross and He has given us our new identity that we are no longer a slave to sin, that we are now set free. Sabi po sa Romans 6 verse 14, For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. The word shall not, una, command. Command siya sa atin. Should not be your master. The question, who is our master? And sabi rin po sa Romans 6.18.22, You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness, and have become slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. So, pinalaya tayo ng Diyos sa kasalanan para magpatuloy, magpatuloy sa kabanalan. Hindi dapat tayo nagpapaalipin sa kasalanan bagos sa Diyos. And the message of the cross is not about continuing to sin. It is to overcome it. Pag nagkasala, nakagawa ng kahinaan, bangon, lapit sa Diyos, then sin no more. Ayan. Tuloy-tuloy lang sa Panginoon. The finished work of Christ tells us to be free from our sins. 
sinasabi po sa atin ni Lord na maging malaya tayo sa mga kasalanan natin. Isang karakter ni Lord mapagmahal. Very loving si Lord. Pero hindi mawawala sa kanyang karakter na galit siya sa kasalanan na umaalipin sa atin. Kaya nga tinapos niya na sa cross and He has given us our new identity that we are no longer a slave to sin. That we are now set free. Sabi po sa Romans 6 verse 14, For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law but under grace. The word shall not una command command siya sa atin should not be your master the question who is our master and sabi rin po sa Romans 6 18-22 you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness and have become slaves to God the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. So, pinalaya tayo ng Diyos sa kasalanan para magpatuloy, magpatuloy sa kabanalan. Hindi dapat tayo nagpapaalitin sa kasalanan bagos sa Diyos. And the message of the cross is not about continuing to sin. It is to overcome it Pag nagkasala, nakagawa ng kahinaan, bangon, lapit sa Diyos, then sin no more. Ayan. Tuloy-tuloy lang sa Panginoon. And last, the finished work of Christ tells us not to work for our salvation, but to work out our salvation. Hindi tayo ililigtas ng extra work natin. Yes, it's our expression of our love for God, but we cannot earn our salvation through works. It is by His grace, sabi di ba? We have been saved through faith, not by works. And that grace changes everything kasi malaya na tayo. We, need, we just need to work it out. Pag sinabi work it out, Sinasanay natin yung sarili natin to be holy, practicing spiritual di- uh, disciplines, maging busy kay Lord. Yung dadating sa punto na takot na takot na tayo magkasala. So we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And these trying times na na-experience natin ngayon, we should always remember the finished work of Christ that He has set us free from sin. We are now free from condemnation. We are reconciled to God. We are justified. We are paid in full. And in every struggles we are facing right now, lagi tayong babalik sa promise ng Diyos, sa diniklear niya, sa sinigaw niya, sa sinabi niya, that it is finished. Now we reflect. Seven last words, ito po ang pinakahuli sa lahat ng mga huling salita na sinambit ng Panginoon bago siya maputulad ng hininga sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Masahin po natin. Luke chapter 23, 4-46 It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn into. 
Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Balikan lang po natin yung mga uh, previous words ng Panginoon at kung paano siya na sulat sa gospel. Sa libro po lang ng Luke na sulat ng unang sinabi niya, Father forgive them. Ganun din sa second word sa Luke. At uh, sa John naman po matatagpuan yung uh, word na pinagkakatiwala ng Panginoon kay John the Beloved, ang kanyang ina. At sa dalawang libro ng Matthew and Mark, nakita natin yung sigaw ng Panginoon, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At yung kanyang pagkauhaw, makikita natin sa John, and uh, yung saitang It is Finished, ay makikita natin sa John chapter 1930. Pero sa libro ng Matthew and Luke lang po, na isulat ang seventh word, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. So, kung babalikan po natin, nasulat din po uh, sa Matthew chapter 27 yung ilan sa mga detalye kung paano napu natap na punta sa seventh word ng Panginoon. Babasa natin sa Matthew 27:50 to 54. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Ano pong nangyari after niya pong uh, sambitin yung kanyang seventh word? At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely! He was the Son of God. Ito po yung konteksto. Ito po yung mga nagbibigay sa atin ng mas matinding uh, ilustrasyon at uh, description kung ano yung significance ng kamatayan ng Panginoon. At ang sabi ng Biblia, pinako po ang Panginoon 9 a.m. ng umaga. So, He was hanging on the cross from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So, imagine nyo po yung bigat, yung Uh, hirap na dinanas ng Panginoon nang siya ay napako sa krus at may pagkakataon na siya ay binuli at may pagkakataon na talagang uh, siya ay uhaw na uhaw tirik na tirik ang araw supposed to be alas 12 pero from 12 noon hanggang alas 3 ng hapon nagkaroon ng kadiliman sa buong Jerusalem Marami nagsasabi na ito'y bunga na eclipse pero wala pong nakapagpatunay dito scientifically. This is a divine sign na ang ministeryo ng Panginoon ay mayroong eternal significance sa bawat isa. Darkness represents God's judgment covering the light of His kindness. The Bible tells us in Old Testament stories na when you talk of darkness, It is as if God is hiding His face. And this is the time that Christ sacrificed His life. He became a sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God. At uh, matatandaan nyo po, if you read Exodus, There were three days of darkness in Egypt before Passover. And there were three hours of darkness before Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb, died on the cross. Coincidence? I don't think so. Hindi po pwede magkamali ang Biblia nagating sa bagay na ito. Kaya mahalaga na maunawaan ng bawat isa na si Jesus, ang ating Panginoon, ay naging sumpa para sa atin. Siya ang sumalo ng lahat ng ating kasalanan, yung penalty ng ating kasalanan para maging karapat dapat tayong kumarap sa Diyos. Galatians chapter 3 Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Kanyang po kabuti ang Panginoon, ibinigay niya ang kanyang buhay, na sa halip na tayo ang ipako sa krus, siya po ang gumawa nun para sa atin. That's the first sign, darkness. The second sign is this. Isa pang naganap noong uh, namatay ang Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo 
ay ang uh, Lindol. Uh, kakaiba itong uh, event na ito kasi hindi lang nagdilim kundi lumindol pa. So nakikita nyo na ang galaw ng Diyos sa uh, isang uh, pangyayari na talagang bumago sa ating kasaysayan. Ano ba ang papel ng Lindol ayon sa Biblia? Earthquakes often represent God's activity. Pag siya nariri yan, uh, katulad ng panahon ng Exodus, no, may lightning and thunder minsan, di ba? Ganun din kapag may lindol, maintindihan natin na talagang may, may ginagawa ang Panginoon. It can also be a form of judgment and a manifestation of His glory. Kung gaano siya kadakila, whenever He would speak, mayroong physical and natural manifestation siya. Yung pagkahati ng kurtina ng templo na naghihiwalay sa holy place and holy of holies, yung pinaka-inner sanctum ng templo, nahati yon hindi mula sa baba, kundi mula sa taas, pababa. Madali kasing hatiin ang temple, temple curtain no? kung sisimulan mo sa baba. Pero anong yare As if the hand or hands of God tore the veil, basically. At ang sabi ng maraming Bible scholars, hindi manipis ang tela na ito. It is at least 6 inches thick. Imagine nyo, sobrang kapal niya kasi inaalagaan na ma-expose yung uh, laman ng Holy of Holies kasi every year, isang beses lang papasok doon ang high priest. And this is the Passover, mga kapatid. Ito yung pagkakataon na uh, mahalaga yung uh, pag-aalay sa, sa templo. The tearing of the temple veil from top to bottom represents the inauguration of new kind of access to God's presence. So, binigyan ng Diyos ang tao ng isa pang uri na paglapit sa Kanya. Ano yun? You can go to the Father through Jesus Christ. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10, 19-22. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain. That is His body. So the death of Christ's body on the cross paved the way so that we can enter God's presence. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, saying ating high priest, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Ganyan ang ginawa ng Panginoon when He died on the cross. Siya ang ating naging great high priest. Makapasok na tayo sa presensya ng Diyos. May isa pang kakaibang naganap nung namatay ang Panginoon. Maaring hindi alam to ng iba. Yung mga dating nanampalataya na nalibing biglang nabuhay mula sa kanilang mga libingan. The resurrection of the dead is considered as the first fruits of the salvation power of the cross. So pumunta sila sa Jerusalem noong nabuhay magmuli ang Panginoon after the third day. Well, according to Jewish and Bible scholars, this could be a fulfillment of the prophecy written in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, 11-14, let's read, sabi dito, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Ito na. O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Basically. That's really a prophetic uh, confirmation. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I the Lord have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. Sa huling pananalita ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo, marami tayong matututunang aral uh, tungkol sa buhay at tungkol sa ating relasyon sa Panginoon. Despite sufferings, Jesus' relationship with His Father remained. Walang dahilan ng Panginoon para magtampo dahil ginagawa niya ang kalooban ng kanyang ama. Pangaman na nalangin sa Garden of Gethsemane, remember the prayer in John chapter 17, 
na kung siya lang masusunod ayaw siya na niyang dumaan sa pagsubok na ito. Pero sabi niya, let your will be done, Father. Sa ating buhay, bago madumadaan tayo sa pagsubok, intindihin natin na ang kalooban pa rin ng Diyos ang ating susuntin. Wala tayong dahilan para magtampo dahil hindi natin nakikita ang tunay na panukalan ng Diyos sa kabila ng mga pagsubok. Manatili tayong mga anak na lumalapit sa ating Ama. We must continue to be children of God bagamat dumaharap tayo sa mga matitinding trahedya ng buhay. Father, I commend to you my spirit. At the end of his life, Jesus returned to his Father. Ang kanyang buhay ay inalay niya sa Ama. Ang kanyang uh, misyon ay para sa panukala ng kanyang Ama. You will read in Isaiah chapter 53, ito ay God the Father planned redemption and rescue mission. Kaya kaligayahan ng Panginoon na sumunod sa kalooban ng kanyang Ama. Kaya kung sino nagpadala sa kanya, dun siya babalik. At the end of our lives, we must always remember this. Na pabalik pa rin tayo sa nagbigay ng buhay, babalik pa rin tayo sa ating amang nasa langit, nasa dahilan ba tayo nasa mundong ibabaw. We can read in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 3 ang isang prinsipyo sa ating relasyon sa Panginoon. Therefore tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Return to me and I will return to you. Kung saan tayo nagmula, ang ating buhay, ang ating lakas ay galing sa Diyos, sa ating uh, paglisan sa mundong ibabaw, naway ang ating spirito papunta rin sa Kanya. At ang ating buong pagkatao ay para sa Panginoon. Christ's death revealed to many that He is indeed the Son of God. If you notice, yung mga unbeliever, mga Gentile Roman soldiers, naniwala sila na si Kristo na namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo ang tunay na Diyos at dapat sambahin. So anong matututunan natin? Just to summarize itong mga huling salita ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Ang first word niya is all about forgiveness. Ang second word niya is about our final destination. Saan ka ba pupunta sa piling ng Diyos o malayo sa Diyos? Langit o impyerno? The third is about family relationship. Mahalin natin ang ating mga magulang at mga kapatid. Fourth is our forsaken feeling. Kung feeling natin, nararamdaman natin, napapabayaan tayo ng Panginoon. Binigyan tayo ng assurance ng Panginoon. No? Na yung... Uh, ating Diyos na sinasamba, mamahalin tayo. Fifth, fulfillment of our desires. Tulad ng kanyang kauhawan sa ating pagsamba, dapat mauhaw din tayo sa kanya. Sabi nga na Psalm 37.4, we must delight ourselves in the Lord. And six, finding rest in God. At ang pinakahuli, faith in our Father. So ano ngayon ang ating gagawin? First, you must accept the message of the cross. Walang silbi ang mahal na araw kung hindi papunta rito ang ating mensahe. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those being lost, but to us being saved, it is the power of God. Mga kapatid, mga magulang, ang cross ay ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Sumisimbolo sa kanyang kaligtasan. We should never ignore the message of the cross. At anong mensahe ng kamatayan ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo? Ay magsisi tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. The Lord is not slow concerning His promise as some count slowness, but is long-suffering toward us, not purposing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mga kapatid, hindi tayo niligtas ng Panginoon uh, dahil sa kung ano paman mga trivial, mga mabababaw na dahilan, kundi niligtas tayo mula sa kapahamakan ng kasalanan at ang parusa papunta sa impyerno. Kaya kailangan tayo magsisi, kailangan natin talikuran ng kasalanan at uh, patuloy tayo mabuhay para sa Kanya. At ang sabi ni San Pedro dito, no, that all should come to repentance. Baguhin natin yung utak natin. Kung dati nabubuhay tayo sa mundo, mabuhay tayo para sa Diyos. And put your faith in Christ. Ang ating buhay ay dapat nakatungtong 
sa Panginoon. John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as received Him, He gave to them authority to become the children of God to those who believe on His name. Kayo ba'y naniniwala na kaya kayong iligtas ng Panginoon? You can do it. Iligay niyo ang inyong buhay sa kanyang mga kamay. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi napunta rito ang Panginoon. Hindi siya namatay sa krus ng albaryo para parusahan tayo, kundi tayo ay iligtas. Kaya you're missing out the message of the Holy Week kapag hindi nyo nakukuha ang mensahe na ito. At anong ating gagawin as a response? We must surrender and make Jesus Christ. Gawin natin siya as our personal Lord and Savior. At kaya mong gawin niyang kapatid ngayon, kung nais mong tumanggap sa Panginoon, I will just lead you into prayer. And this is the greatest decision you could ever make in your life. Sabi mo sa Panginoon, Panginoong Jesus, ako'y nagpapakumbaba. Inaamin ko na ako'y makasalanan. Patawarin mo ko, Panginoon, sa lahat ng aking kasamaan. Linisin mo ko, Panginoon, at isinusuko ko ang aking buhay sa iyong mga kamay. Gagawin kita, Panginoon, magmula ngayon bilang Diyos, Panginoon, at Hari ng buhay ko. Salamat, Panginoon. Kung sinabi mo yan sa iyong puso na buo at puno ng katapatan, Naniniwala ako na mayroong magandang gagawin si Lord sa buhay mo bilang anak ng Diyos. At sa lahat ng ito, pag natin kalilimutan na ang mahal na araw ay panahon para balikan natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos, balikan natin ang kaligtasan na ibinibigay ng Diyos sa atin sa pamagitan ni Yesu Kristo. Maraming salamat mga kapatid at patuloy tayong manalangin at sa linggo, pag-uusapan naman natin ang binipisyo ng muling pagkabuhay ng Panginoon at ang pag-asa sa kanyang muling pagbabalik mula sa libingan. Hindi na po muling namatay si, si Jesus Christ dahil sa po'y buhay na buhay, hindi po siya nanatili sa krus, hindi may pag-asa tayo dahil siya ay napubuhay at siya ang Diyos magpakailan. Maraming salamat po.